All right, ladies, we are now recording this section and we're going to be focusing on conversation activities to begin with. So when you're preparing your conversation activity assignment, you must definitely include all of these different headings, all of these different categories and items. So what I did, to I created a template that we're going to work with today and we're going to build a conversation activity as a group. So I'd like everybody to participate with ideas. We'll get that Word document up on the screen in a moment. What I did was I took all of these headings that are listed here on Canvas and I created a template. And I would suggest that that's a good idea for you to do as well. Also, at the bottom of this conversation activity page, down below all these samples, there is the Teasel Canada Handbook. Inside this handbook, beginning on page 42, there's very helpful information for building lesson plan ideas. So I would strongly recommend that you have a look at this, this handbook. It's an 83-page document, but it reads fairly quickly because there are a number of blank spaces and it's, it's to a certain extent it's a workbook for you to write into if you were to print it out. I did not print one out but you know I made notes anyway but you can and there are pictures in here and charts so it, it's a, a, a fairly easy read to go through but this handbook is also a very good reference for you for studying for the midterm exam and we'll come back to it in, in just a few moments. So I'm going to go to the, the Word document template that I created. And you'll see in a moment, I'll share that. You see that what I did was I created a template with all of the headings that I pulled from, from the Canvas platform. And by creating this blank template with no details or information added into it, I'm then able, when I did mine after creating this template, then I just copied the template. I had to do 12 conversation activities for a diploma. Foundation does 10 conversation activities. So whatever number of times you need to copy the template and just create your blank template. And then I went back and filled in the, the details of it. So as a group, let's have somebody suggest to us a subject headline or a topic that we're going to be doing today when we build this conversation activity. Somebody give me a, a, a topic title. Be thinking of this as a lesson, a conversation activity for adults, and what, what topic would you like us to, to cover today? Name a topic. Sir. Sport activities. I'm, I'm sorry, beg your pardon? Restaurant. Restaurant. So that's a pretty big topic. Can you narrow it down a, a little bit? What, what are we doing at the restaurant? What's happening at the restaurant? Maybe it's better to talk about or have a conversation plan uh, for food, yeah? Okay. What if we did about regulations surrounding, you know, COVID-19 since that's current and restaurants, because that's a big thing that's out there today. That's a good idea. Yes, that's good. Because food would yeah. be too broad again, so we'd have to try to narrow it down again, right? That makes sense. So let, let's have this. And also we can teach the students how to speak uh, with the waitress in, poli in a polite way. And, and that's a very good topic as well, but that would be a different topic, I would suggest. So you could do one conversation activity related to COVID-19 regulations, and that definitely fits today's, today's situation. Uh, but talking politely with the waitress, that could be another conversation activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
keep in mind you only have 30 to 45 minutes. That time frame is suggested in the Canvas platform. That is suggested as an optimal time frame for one conversation activity. So let's let's talk about uh, we're going to have these people be adults. What what ages do you want these these students to be? What age should intermediate? Intermediate. But well, that would be their the level, the proficiency level. The level, yes, level, yeah. What age do you want these students to be? Twenties. Sure. Let's say twenty to thirty-five. How does that sound? Yeah. And how many students do you think you'll have in this class? Because it's a pandemic, maybe no more than six to ten. That's fine. It could be an online class during the oh. pandemic, so you could you could possibly have more than that, but six to ten is fine. That's okay. Assumptions. So when we we when we we name assumptions related to our conversation activity, uh, let's Let's go down to, uh, before we come back to the assumptions, is this going to be, what is the environment? Is this native or non-native? Is it in a classroom? Is it online? Let's, let's identify those details first, and then we can make some assumptions connected to it. So will this class be a, a native? situation? Are these these students in, in Canada learning English as a second language or are these students in Iran or Pakistan, are they learning English as a foreign language? If I think it will be more challenging if it was non-native just because like if we were teaching this to a younger group or adults who've never learned English before, it would be more challenging if the group was non-native. And I think we would learn more to interact with them if they don't know the language already. Like the challenges would be more in that situation, no? Uh, I agree with you. So non-native, is this in a classroom? Is it online? What, what do you want to do here? online okay so online could be computer or phone all right that's good so we've got the environment sorted out let's go back to our assumptions now because if this is a non-native classroom and it is online what are some assumptions that you need to make about things that must be working for this to happen. Um, basically, link. Yep, go ahead. Yep. I would suggest a link to join the meeting. Yes. So access to internet. meeting link that's good any other assumptions that you you can think of connected to this situation um assumption that like they know the basics of the language and are able to interact at least somewhat with each other that's a good one. We could also assume that because the pandemic has been ongoing for two years, that everyone has some version of their knowledge of how this works. Fair enough. Yep, that's that's good too. Uh, know enough English to interact with 
each other. That's good. How does that look? Everybody happy with that? Is there something that we should be considering that we're missing? Uh, no, not specifically. The assumptions are, are just uh, things such as what we have listed here that fit the situation that you're creating. So these are these are good assumptions. These these make sense, and uh, these are just assumptions that that fit the situation. So there's nothing, there's no preconceived item that must you must include here. It's just ideas and and things connected to what you're building in this situation. And. You know, this would change a bit if, if you said the the uh, if you said the environment was in a classroom, then it would you could have different some different assumptions, right? But any of your conversation activities that have the the situation the environment online for the class, you could use basically the same the same assumptions and copy and paste them into the next conversation activity. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Okay. What about the professional and educational background and, and interests of these people? So we've got intermediate proficiency level, and they're, they're, you know, relatively young adults. So what about their professional educational background? What are you going to say about, about that? Um, we could assume that they have a minimum of at least 10th grade, so basic education at least. Um, if it's a mixed group, there could be students who are in universities. Um, there could be people who are young professionals because the, the age range is between 20 and 35. Um, there could also be experienced working class people. Uh, there could be um, professionals of every kind, really. And there could also be people who um, are only learning it now, maybe to travel abroad or to I mean, I'm I'm going really broad here, but like there could be a lot of things in that age group, especially since that's like one of the major age groups for like the working class. It could be really anyone with any kind of like a knowledge base. You're absolutely right. Yes, I totally agree. Agree with you. Excuse me, or maybe we can do our best in order to work on their imagination, yeah, through their um learning vocabularies or uh, something due to our uh, topic yes that that's very good and i would suggest that that, that would uh, go on down under the goals so can you say that uh -huh. again because because the goal of the lesson is definitely always related very closely to the title of the lesson so please repeat again what, what you just said there uh, I said uh, we should work uh, work on their um, imagination. Okay, and what was the rest of it that you said? Um, and uh, practice uh, more on the vocabulary uh, based on the topic. I mean, relate to the subject of the conversation. Yes. Okay, how's that? And that that's a very specific goal, and it, it connects to the title. That's good. So, 
Let's come back up here to the knowledge of the student's first language, the mother tongue, and the cultural backgrounds. Are they all from the same culture? Are all the students in this class from the same country? No. Okay. Different countries. Different cultures. And always watch for these red squiggly lines and watch for any of these squiggly line things in, in your in your assignments uh, because whenever I'm marking these assignments I do take marks off for grammar and spacing and punctuation so the the correct way to have this typed is to put a space there after the comma so if you have a correct a correct spacing then you're able to If you have correct spacing, then you're able to, to actually gain some marks. Now, just a little side piece of information. Can you see my toolbar across the top of the, the document here? Is that visible to you, my big toolbar? Yes, it's okay. Yes, you can see the editor button here on the right-hand side. Yes. So I don't know if you have that editor button in your Word document. I don't know if you have a, a, a current enough version of the Word document. But if you have this editor button, you can click on the editor button and it, it gives you, it highlights spelling mistakes and it says uh, grammar is okay. Uh, it, it gives you things that you can look for. So let's find out what the spelling item was. Ah, so it's saying countries, comma, different is a spelling mistake. And it suggests that we choose this option, which puts that space after the comma. And so it fixes it. And now it tells me I finished reviewing the editor's suggestion. So I can close that now. But you can use that editor function to help you identify problems, some problems and issues in your paper before you submit it. So I suggest that you use that. So we've got different countries, different cultures. Different mother tongues. Now, what countries are we going to say our students are from? Let's name two or three countries. I'm from India. Okay, we have students from India. Another country. Pakistan. Another country. Iran. All right, so it's a very good idea to name some countries that you are, are thinking that your, your students will be from because that can help you actually do some of the, the activities in the lesson plan. And you, you can make, you know, COVID-19 regulations are similar from country to country, but there, there are also differences from one country to another. So you could ask the students to, uh, uh, down, we get down here into the actual activity guide down here where we do the step by step, you could actually ask the students to research the COVID restrictions, the COVID regulations in their own country. That could be part of the lesson and then they can share that with each other. All right, very good. Let's keep going now with the, the methodology. Methodologies or methodology. What methodologies do you think you would use in this class? 
ALM. Very good. Anything else? We're probably TPR. Yeah, TPR. Why TPR? Well, if you were if you were doing this online, you could um, and and say like the students are scattered all over the place. Um, you could ask them to like you know enact what they would have to do like in the sense of. How would you wear your mask and like what would your social distancing be? Those are things you could still do online, even if they're not physically present in a classroom. That's very good. So, so keep that in mind, Eliza, and we'll use that in a few moments down in the direction guide. We'll have that as a, as, as part of our actual steps. Okay. So keep that in mind. We'll, we'll come back. We'll use that in a moment. So that's TPR. Any other methodologies? Notion function. Yeah, now what is the full correct name of, of that that particular? Um, okay. NFS, yeah. You, you're very, you're very uh, close. It's not notion uh, function. Direct approach, yeah. Yeah, let, let's just finish with NFS first. So mm -hmm. NF, NFS is notional functional syllabus. Functional. Notional fu functional so syllabus. And direct method. That's very good. So that gives us a good a good range of methodologies that we can we can uh, deal with and and make use of. Now there's one more that sort of covers everything. What is that methodology that covers? It's kind of the umbrella methodology for all the others. CLT. Yeah. CLT. Yes, definitely. Now, available material. What items are you going to include in this this lesson? PowerPoint. Very good. PowerPoint. You could do whiteboard. Like whiteboard and pen. Widow projector. Now remember, it's online. So you could uh -huh, do yeah. a video or something instead. Right. Digital whiteboard can be used. Video links. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously. Computers, phones. Flashcard. Yes. Oh, oh, there we got a little red line that's helping me out because I spelled computers incorrectly. There you go. So always pay attention to those those little things that jump out of the Word document. Uh, flashcards. Yes, you can use flashcards. You can use those online. What else? email the uh, participants a copy of like the rules and regulations surrounding what we're talking about. So PDF or some form of written um, guideline. That's a good one. And uh, the teacher can also bring mask and sanitizer uh, just uh, to uh, show the students about these materials. Yes, yes, absolutely. Very good. Okay, any anything else that you can think of uh, think of in the way of, of available materials here? Okay. Now, right at, at this spot, actually, probably down after the enabling objectives down here, just in front of the conversation activities, I'm just going to put a little note here. Uh, insert pictures from internet and you can go to different sites to get free free images
there are a couple of a couple of websites you can go to to get some free images. Uh, you need to also include YouTube links for videos on the topic, and so you can go to YouTube. You can copy the link and paste it right here in in your lesson plan. And you might have a couple of videos, so you put the links here just so that you've got them in one spot, but you might also put the link down further in the direction guide when you get to, you might get down to step number four or five and you say, uh, show students a video and you put the link down there as well. We'll come back to that in a moment. Would adding something like um, information about the new variant be, be valid here? Just because if we were doing, um, since we're, we're talking about like eating in at restaurants and those are rules that keep changing all the time, would adding something like that add more relevance to what we're talking about in class? Like make it more uh, like today's, what, what's relevant to today? What's happening like today in the world kind of a thing? Or do we just like leave it with the restaurant etiquette for something like this? Well, I think your suggestion of, of uh, this could also be a, a PDF emailed to students. I think your suggestion is a very good one to include here because that that is definitely very current. And just yesterday in the news here in Ontario, uh, I read that the first two cases of, of that virus coming out of South Africa were reported here in Ontario, in Canada. So uh, it's definitely a current topic, and you're absolutely right. The rules around COVID are changing. They're in, in a constant state of change. So this keeps it extremely current. Yes, that's a very good item. That I just added it under the available material, but that could also be part of the discussion items when we come down here uh, to these spots down below. So we've got uh, these goals for this lesson. Let's list some terminal objectives. Now remember terminal objectives, these are the benefits to the students after the lesson is over, after the lesson is over, after it's completed. So what are the what will be the benefits? What are you targeting as the benefits that the students will have at their disposal when this lesson is done? You should name three or four objectives here, three or four benefits that are going to come to the students. Can somebody name a first one? Uh, becoming fluent in that specific subject. Or maybe their vocabulary, uh, their accent, or uh, their pronunciation uh, will improve. So I, I like the, the pronunciation of vocabulary will, will be improved. I'm, I'm not going to put in the, the item you mentioned about the, the accent, whoever that was who mentioned that, because as we've discussed before, the, if somebody having an accent is not a problem, and there's nothing wrong with somebody having an accent, if the communication is well understood. May I add one more yes. benefit? So being able to follow up with the COVID-19 updates in English. Ah, there's an excellent one. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Are there any other benefits? That you can think of? 
just going to put here pronunciation of vocabulary would be improved. Listening or speaking. Yes, and what about listening and speaking? Uh, I said listening and speaking will also be improved during practicing. Yeah, or also the grammar. The fluency of using the grammar, maybe. Good. All right, so that gives you a good idea of beneficial terminal objectives. You know, Ms. Miller, sorry to interrupt, but yes, go, go ahead. Um, what would, uh, would there be anything else that you would add into that that we might have missed? Uh, no, I think that's a, a good list of four terminal benefits, terminal objective benefits. I think that's a good list. You see, there, there's no there's no absolute correct list of items. It's just things that you are going to work to achieve in the lesson plan when you're delivering it down below here. Right. So the now the enabling objectives. Uh, the enabling objectives. These are the the things that you do during the lesson to achieve the terminal objectives. So what are you going to do in the lesson to achieve these things? So how are you going to have the students become fluent with the vocabulary? So um, for fluency, weekly, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I was just saying for fluency, what are you going to do? Go ahead, Eliza. So, uh, I guess, sorry, go ahead. Eliza, what were you going to say? Oh, um, I was going to say that, like, um, we could introduce the topic first, like, talk about, like, a general idea of, like, what the pandemic is and why we're choosing to, to discuss the topic specifically today. So um, bringing in the Omicron variant would be like making it relevant for the students today. So then you would be like, so what are some of the terminologies? You could start interacting with the students, asking them questions about what do they know about the terminologies surrounding COVID-19, for example, and go from there. That could be like step one, maybe. So, uh, how about uh, COVID terminology worksheets? Vocabulary lists? That type of thing? That would, that would be, I think that would be a good step one and then we could go from there. Okay, now we've just mentioned worksheets and vocabulary lists, so we need to go back up here to, to our available material. We need to make sure that we include worksheets and vocabulary lists up here. So you need to make sure that all the, all the different sections of, of your document relate to each other, okay? So we've got those those couple of enabling objectives. What else are we going to do here? What what else do you think you will do? Look at this point right here under terminal objectives, being able to follow up with COVID updates in English. What is it, something that you could do during the class that links to that terminal objective? Show some news broadcast. Uh, 
we could also ask students if they know if there's any local updates that come in every single day like here in canada i know that like for my province at least the government website puts out an update every single day in the afternoon about how many new cases there were hospitalizations etc cetera, etc cetera. Yes. and any new changes in the rules will also be in the same article and that's updated every single day same here in Ontario. Yes, exactly. And, and I expect the same thing occurs around the globe. If we were to ask them about if they follow something like that in their own native language and to see if they're able to take a minute, because everyone will definitely have access to the internet. So if they can take a minute to find it in English for their area. Very good. So in their own language and also in English. Okay. So you see now you, you've built a list of, of how you're going to achieve the goal to arrive at your terminal objectives. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? You see how you build that, and everything relates back to the goal, and the goal relates back to the topic title way up, way up at the top of the document. But just keep, keep in mind the terminal benefits, the terminal objectives are the benefits after the lesson is finished. The enabling objectives are what you do during the lesson to arrive at the terminal objectives. Okay? Questions? Okay, so uh, we're not going to take the time right now to go out to the internet and find pictures, but you can, whatever your subject matter is, you can go and find, you know, four to six pictures and just what, cop copy them and paste or, or, or uh, do snip and sketch and paste them into your your document, however, however you do that, and go and find uh, one or two or three video links on YouTube and, and paste the video links here. Because when I'm marking any of these assignments, I actually go to the videos and I watch a little bit of the videos to make sure that they link to your topic. And sometimes the video links don't work. So you need to make sure that the links actually function as well. So be careful when you're copying and pasting links. Make sure you get the entire link. All right, folks. Let's, let's bump this down to the, the next page so we've got this all on one page. Now we've got, here's the actual step-by-step, -step, and we're going to put a, a number beside all these steps all the way down. So step number one, you arrive in the class, students arrive, What's the first thing you're going to do? What's going to happen? Uh, to to uh, bring out the relevant books and copies. Okay. So I, I'm using short forms. I use SS for students and I use T for teacher. So the teacher okay. brings out. Now, remember, you're online. So, oh, okay. Okay. rather than rather than bringing out, let's open up. It. Okay, share. Share is also good. Here's with pictures and PDF of today's topic. How how about that? Does that make sense? Yes. Let's say teacher introduces topic. 
by sharing the screen with pictures and PDF of today's topic. Okay, so you've done that. What's step number two? What's happening next? Uh, maybe the skimming of the topic or uh, a brainstorming session. Okay. And give me more details about this brainstorming session. How are you going to trigger this brainstorming session? What will happen? How will you get the brainstorming started with the students? You could start by asking if um, the students have heard about the new variant, since that's been in the news recently and kind of work yourself um, back from there and be like so what are some of the new restrictions that have been placed in your area and then kind of steer the conversation around to have any of you been to a restaurant recently do you do takeaway or eat in and what are some of the rules surrounding that where you live maybe that's good you you've got several points there so let I can't type fast enough to keep up with you, so let, let's just get those down on paper here. Sorry, uh, I shall slow down. Yeah, no, that's okay. So uh, the teacher asks if they are aware of any new restrictions. Let's say near their home, for instance. And then you, you mentioned something about restaurants. What was it you, you said about restaurants? Yeah, so you could ask them if they had been to a restaurant recently or do they eat out often? Okay, let's, let's, let's put that back as number three because that, that's kind of a, a new little point. Right. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because if we're going between 20 and 35, there might be a bunch of single adults who, if they're professionals, probably don't have the time to cook every day. Sure. Or, you know, so probably will eat out a lot more. So it seems relevant. Yep, makes sense. And next we could have we could have them uh, let let's get some tpr involved here uh, how are we going to to get tpr involved in a, um, in you could order. ask everyone if they have masks to bring them out um just to kind of like play act how they would if they were going out to the house. And you can also mention stuff like, um, sorry, I'm in, I'm in the service industry. So I work at a fast food restaurant. I have people coming in all the time. And a lot of the time they forget to put the mask up over their nose. So they still have the mask on, but mask up over your nose is kind of a, a sticking point almost constantly yes. so yeah. that could be something that could be enacted like ask everybody to put their masks on and be like how many of you like forgot to do it over your nose or have you seen others forget to put it over their nose or something like that yes very good point yeah that's good Now let let's have some uh, let's have some some group work here, and so remember you're online. So, in order to have them work in in pairs or in in small groups, uh, the teacher can set up breakout rooms for students. in pairs or or threes 
you know, depending on how it, how it breaks down. If you've got an odd number, you're not going to have pairs working out very well. But it might be in, in groups of two or three uh, in the breakout rooms to discuss their recent restaurant experiences. Now, this could be dine-in or take-out. And let's let's give this five minutes of time. And then they've gone to the breakout rooms. They've had this discussion about their recent restaurant experience. What do you think is a good next step to occur in this lesson? After they've talked in pairs or groups of two or three, what do you think we should have them do next? So they've returned to the full class and remember we want to be focusing on speaking and listening in conversation activities. What, what are we going to have the students do now? Can we ask them to um, kind of share in pairs what they've discussed and um, what they've come up with in what they've discussed? Like any salient points, so like one or two points per group. Yes, very good. Exactly. Okay, excellent. What do you think you will do next? Let's, um, look, let's look back up at our, our materials here, the available material. So we've made use of, uh, so we, we showed a, a PDF of uh, something to do with COVID at the beginning. We've got masks and sanitizer. We've used the masks. Uh, we can use the sanitizer a bit later, but what about having them watch a video link right about here? And I'm saying from above because I'm just relating back to this little point here where we, we put our links. So show a YouTube video link. Uh, what is this video going to be about? I mean, we know it's related to COVID-19, but be more specific. What, what video, what type of video do you think you would, would show here? Some news related to flights, bands, um, connecting to South Africa. Okay, so I, I didn't, I couldn't quite hear all the words you said, Rowan. Could you repeat that for us, please? Yes, sure. So I was saying we can show a link discussing the news, um, showing how countries are banning their flights from connecting to South Africa. Ah, 
Okay, that was the part I couldn't quite catch the words uh, banning flights. Yes. Okay, that's that's very good. So we show them this video. Now, what are we going to do while they're watching the video? What what could we have them do? I'm stumped. So, listening to the video is one thing, but there are probably going to be new words in that video. And so we need to, as the teacher, we need to identify what are quite likely going to be new words to some or all of the students. We could prepare a vocabulary list on a worksheet we could set it up as a PDF. We could email it to the students so they have that PDF to look at while they're listening to this YouTube video. And then after the video, And it wants us to have a space between those two words. Makes sense. After watching video, have students take turns saying the new vocabulary words in a sentence. That makes sense? Yes. Um, I have a question, Mr. Miller. Yes, Eliza. So if we are going to be asking them questions about words that they came across in the video and we're, we have to create a worksheet, do we have to include the worksheet as well as the PDF document that's mentioned earlier in this piece as part of our assignment? Yes. Okay. And uh, would it also be um, a good thing to send the students a copy of the PDF and or the vocabulary sheet before class starts just to get them familiar with it or would it be better to do it right in class? Uh, quite honestly, I think it's better to email to students before class. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because that gives them an opportunity. Maybe some of them want to print it out. So it would give them an opportunity to do that. All right, but keep in mind, we are, we've mentioned all these items in our available materials, and now we need to make sure we use all these items somewhere in the class lesson plan. All right, so we've done that. What would our uh, next point be? A quick review. 
excellent idea. And how would we do a quick review? What's a, a very good way of doing a quick review? Look back up at our list of available materials here. What would you use from the available material list to do a quick review? Flashcards? Sure. That makes very good sense. And or even pictures? Yes. Um, I'm interrupting again, but guys, please say something. I feel like I'm the only one talking. <laughs> well, that, that's okay. We, but you're, you're right, Eliza. We want as many people participating as possible. So what are you going to do with these flashcards or pictures at this point in the lesson? But, so you, you've got flashcards, and maybe because you're online, maybe the flashcards are actually as PDF. You know, I mean, because if, if you've got a flashcard and I, I try holding it up to the camera, and of course my camera's not working right now. Let me get this camera reset. This camera is quite annoying. So if you've got flashcards, you've got a set of nice flashcards you've made up, and if I hold them up to the camera, that might work. But if I'm sharing screen, it might not work quite as well. But so you might actually show a PDF of a flashcard, or you could actually hold it up to the screen, you know, whatever you think is going to work best for you, depending on what's on the flashcard. So you ha just have to adjust, adapt. Uh, if you're showing pictures, you could always scroll back up to these pictures that you've inserted and you could talk about each of the pictures that you've got in your document. You could do it that way. Uh, you, you, and if you're referring to flashcards here, you should include images of the flashcards here. Insert pictures from internet. Show worksheet vocabulary list here you actually just type it out as a list right inside the document show images of flashcards can we see the screen share screen please oh I'm sorry yeah, thank you yes yeah, sorry about that So I just added where we've got inserting the pictures from the internet. Uh, we also, you also need to show the worksheet, the vocabulary list here. Uh, if you're using flashcards, if you've mentioned flashcards up here, then you need to show images of those flashcards in this document. So any of these items that you list, pictures, the links, you know, if, if you create a PowerPoint, so you've mentioned a PowerPoint, well, you need to attach the PowerPoint, you need to send us the PowerPoint with your conversation activity, so we can look at the PowerPoint. So whatever you mention here in the materials, now obviously, you're not going to send masks and sanitizer, but you, you should include pictures of masks in a picture of a sanitizer bottle. Under. Mr. Miller? Yes. They could be actually watching the PowerPoint on the screen, on the shared screen. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but you need to include the PowerPoint. Yes, definitely. Here. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so always include Everything you mention, always include it with your lesson plan. Because if you, if you have a PowerPoint, you include the PowerPoint. Let's have a 
teacher shows PowerPoint now. So you've mentioned the PowerPoint. Well, I need to see the PowerPoint. If I'm marking your, your assignment, I need to see what's in the PowerPoint. <clears throat> so what's in this PowerPoint? The teacher's now going to show this PowerPoint. What, what will be in that PowerPoint? So we've, we've talked a lot about the new variant. We've talked about masks, proper use of masks. We've looked at new vocabulary words. What is part of our part of our, our enabling objectives? What's an item from our enabling objectives that we have not we've not done yet in our our assignment in our steps down below? You could have a mock conversation piece as part of your uh, PPT, like an interaction between uh, the person at the restaurant and a customer. Yes, yes, you could set that up. So you could have uh, the the PowerPoint could could display. Conversation example between customer and restaurant employee. That's good. It could also have a brief introduction to the topic, like when you start the class, because I think we mentioned that we share the P the PPT at the beginning of the class, right? So it could be a brief history of COVID and the variants that have come out, um, maybe. Well, we didn't say anything about PowerPoint up here. Share screen uh, with please. pictures and PDF, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's mostly what I meant by PowerPoint. So the teacher will have that PowerPoint prepared and then it will start in the beginning, and that's how we will introduce all those new info as we go. So you think this should be the PowerPoint here? Yeah. Okay. So on the PowerPoint, can you give me those items again that you want the PowerPoint to show what details? Um, brief history of the pandemic. Like where it started, when it started. And since we're talking about variants um, and how that's affecting the rules, maybe a brief history of the variants we've had and where they originated. That's good. Okay, that's good. So we've got that back up as at the introduction. So instead of the PPT to display the conversation, could we do that as the PDF instead? Sure. Certainly. Certainly that, that could be a, a PDF instead. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to so next, we, we're displaying this conversation example. So if we're showing them a PDF that has uh, customer, employee, and, and showing customer and employee with, you know, they're saying different things. If we're showing them that PDF, what, what can we have the students do? Identify, identify maybe all the COVID-19 protocols applied and how the customers are dealing. Okay, that's a very good point. I'm, I'm going to suggest, so, so remember that, Rowan, we're going to use that point next. But let's, let's look at this PDF. So we've got a PDF up on the screen and it's showing a conversation between customer and employee, students, Read the conversation by 
acting out the roles shown. So let's have them read from the PDF and, and we say, okay, Rowan, you're the customer. Eliza, you're the restaurant employee. So please, the two of you, read that PDF you see on the shared screen and have the conversation back and forth, uh, whatever you've got in that conversation. Okay? That would work as the fluency and the grammar piece for what we said for objectives, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, they read the conversation on PDF shown by acting out the roles. There, let's have that. Okay, so now Rowan, your point, the point you had again, it was a very good point. Let's do that next. So what was that again? Yes, yeah, so to identify and list the COVID-19 protocols applied in the restaurant between employees and customers. Excellent. Uh, so shall we say uh, the protocols? Applied, maybe. App applied, that's yeah. good, yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's good. And there's one item that we have not addressed yet out of our enabling objectives. So we've done, uh, we've, we've had a, a, a YouTube video with a, uh, where did, where'd it go here? So we had a, a YouTube video with, uh, oh, here it is, discussing news about countries banning flights from South Africa. So, so we've had the new news broadcast item that we listed in our enabling objectives. There's a key point inside the enabling objectives that we've not mentioned yet. We updates. Ah, are you referring, Eliza, you're referring to government updates? Yes, and finding them in English so that they can like translate, I guess, or like so that they can have them in tandem and get more fluent by reading both, maybe? Very good. So let's have them take turns reading sections. So they might read one or two sentences each and work through the group reading one or two se sections each from government regulations displayed. And, and you could have these displayed uh, as slides in a PowerPoint presentation. So with the PowerPoint, the beauty of the PowerPoint is that you can, uh, you can have large print in the PowerPoint and, and you could have one item per slide. And so you could ask one student to read this slide, you go to the next slide, ask another student to read the next slide to take turn, turns reading sections. Slides. Uh, to talk about the, uh, the government regulations. And then you could ask students to explain certain words from this PowerPoint. 
Okay, so so this gives you a pretty good idea of the detail that you need to go into. Now, we're not finished yet with this list of points with the directions and the guide for this lesson plan. We haven't finished yet, uh, but you would keep going, and I think you can see exactly what the uh, what the, the the extent of the detail needs to be inside this. So you would keep going, and and you should probably have you know 25, 30 points of steps that occur, items that are happening inside the lesson plan. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes, but I do have one question. Yes, I think uh, up around point eight, we talked about um, the PDF worksheet um, that was emailed to the class and how we would discuss the vocabulary and words. And at the last point that, that we just discussed, we said we would ask them to read out um, each slide and then discuss the words in them again. So is does that not make it either repetitive or redundant to like use the same terminology or would we only be focusing on words if there's something new that's mentioned that wasn't there before? Well, this PDF from the, so when we watch the video, uh, the PDF worksheet related to the video could very likely be different words than what are shown in government regulations. Okay. Government regulations, you, government uses their own version of language, which is oftentimes more formal. Uh, the, the, so the, the YouTube, that's a, an excellent point you're making. Was that Eliza making that point? Yes. It, it, it's a very good point that you're making, Eliza. And, and that's where you would need to determine, uh, you know, is it this, going to be the same list of words between this YouTube video and the PowerPoint? I would suggest not likely, but you can create, because you know ahead of time what the YouTube video is about. You know ahead of time what's, what the government regulations are that you're putting into the PowerPoint. So you could have, you could make sure that this PDF worksheet for the YouTube video does not duplicate words on the government regulation PowerPoint. Okay. Yep. So, you, so that's up to you to make sure that it is a different set of words. Or maybe you decide that you want to do some review and you use the same set of words again from the worksheet when you're discussing the government regulations, and that, that's up to you to design that and coordinate how you want the lesson to go, right? Mm -hmm. But it's an excellent point, and it, it's the kind of point that you need to be very aware of and, and make, sure, make sure that you either don't duplicate accidentally or make sure that you're duplicating on purpose for review necessity and and that's fine too right so you you steer the lesson the way you want to build the lesson okay yep and all these points explain it very clearly now as i mentioned last week there are three reasons that we're asking you to build these lesson plans in such extensive detail number one is for you to have the practice of building a lesson plan, a conversation activity, in, in great detail. The second reason is that if at some point in the future when you're in a teaching situation and you, uh, you're not able to be there for, for some reason for a class, you could email this lesson plan to another student, another teacher rather, a supply teacher, and, and that teacher would be able to, uh, to do your lesson plan and, uh, and, and present it with no problem because all the details are here. So even somebody not familiar with the topic would be able to do it because you've provided them with everything they need. And then the third reason is we're asking you to do this because we want to mark the assignment. But this is not just a make work project. 
reasons number one and two are the primary reasons for having you do this, is to give you the experience of doing it. All right, any questions so far, folks? We have two more categories to fill out. <clears throat> How? We have, oh, sorry, we yeah. have um, we have kind of uh, discussed about. I want to say eighty-five plus percent of our objectives already. So you said it will be good to have twenty-five to thirty points per conversation piece. So if we were to continue on with what we've already done. How would we extend that in a way where we would keep the content original without repeating a lot? Or even if we did, then how would we strategically like review things so that it doesn't come across as excessive and just trying to add in fillers? You know what I mean? I, I know exactly what you're saying, Eliza. When I say 25 to 30 points, you, you sort of aim for that. Maybe this lesson plan only has 18 to 22 points. So 25 to 30 is not an absolute number, but I, I okay. just wanted I just wanted to make sure that see what what you do not want to hand in is a lesson plan that has two points with it, because right. I've had, I've had many lesson plans that I've been sent uh, for marking for assessment, and they only have one or two points, and that doesn't tell me anything. And so I have had to, and, and they were, and some of these lesson plans had no, no goals, no objectives listed, no materials listed, nothing, you know, I've given marks out of 25. I've given some marks that were two or three out of, out of 25 because it just didn't have enough information. Right. So, so when I say 25 to 30 points, you know, maybe it's, 20 to 25 points, or maybe you've got a, a lesson plan that only has 18 or 19 points. And it, it just depends on if it, if it is a full lesson plan and right. you've got a good logical pro progression and you have covered, as you mentioned a moment ago, you've covered all the enabling objectives that you've mentioned and you've used all the available materials that you've mentioned you know, if, right. you, if you've covered any, everything and you've got a, a detailed, logical plan that is 18 points long, that's fine. Right. So, so 30 points is not necessary. I had some plans my, of my own. I had some conversation activities that had 35 points and I had other, other conversation activities that had 16 or 18 points. So, so it's not right. an absolute number. It just, you just need detail. Right. So if I added like a five minute section or a 10 minute section at the end of like my 30 minutes or 40 minutes for student questions, would that count as um, as part of like the lesson plan? Or would I have to be like 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes of actual lesson plan and then 10 minutes for questions? It, it would need to be 35 to 40 minutes of actual lesson, lesson plan. plan. OK, sounds good. But but then then. So your point could now go into the assessment category. Okay. So at the end of the lesson, T spends, let's not say 10, minute, 10 minutes. We don't have a huge number of students. Let's say five minutes. asking students to explain a summary of the topic. So how many students did we say we had? Six to 10 students. So let's say we, we, we take six to 10 minutes, one minute per student, asking students to explain summary of the topic. So 
students can also ask for clarification throughout lesson. How, how else can the, the teacher do assessment during this, this class? Whenever the students are speaking, what is the teacher doing? Uh, be sure to include the, the aspect of uh, pronunciation or vocabulary, no? Yes, good. So how about that? Does that make sense? And that fits perfectly to this lesson. Yes. I, All right. Excuse me. What about the building up the new conversation related to the topic or subject? Huh? Ah, that would be a good item to put in the homework assignment. Mm -hmm. So how how will you word that? Uh huh. How are you going to word that as their take home assignment? Uh, have them to just build up the new conversation re uh, related to the, the uh, conversation that we uh, learned and talked about. Yeah, uh, change the uh, what? Change the participant, or maybe change the um, environment, or change different things in order to make the new one to work more on their vocabulary or uh, conversation, or I mean grammar more. So let's have them change the environment from a, a restaurant to another place. Is that what you meant? Yes, to some extent, yeah. How, how, does, that, how does that look? Is that okay? Does that make sense, what you were thinking? Yes. Okay. So we asked them to create a new conversation related to this topic, and they change the environment. Instead of a restaurant, they pick another environment. And what, what are we going to have them do with, with this new conversation? What will they do with it? Will they just create it in their head, and it'll just live there in their head? Or, or what, what will we do with it? Email it. Maybe prepare 10 or 15 minutes uh, to write or think in a group, yeah? In a group of two or three person. Well, remember they're online, so it, it might be difficult to coordinate them working in, in groups. So I'm going to suggest they write individual material uh, I mean maybe some of the students are weaker and uh, by uh, working in a group maybe they uh, have more um, what uh, motivation ah actually or speak or think I agree. I agree. I find it really helpful when we chat with each other on our WhatsApp group about things. Um, it just makes it easier because uh, sometimes each of us can answer the other's question yes. or yeah. explain it in a way that makes sense. Very good. Uh, 
Yes, because sometimes some of the students are so shy. And we should make them just to speak, huh? Yeah. Motivate sure. them. Sure. I agree. That's, I'm in a group. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yes. So, and they bring it to next class to present. This point right here, that point is a very important point. Always include that, that whatever the follow-up homework assignment is, whatever it is on any lesson plan, they always bring it with them to the next class to present it. Because if you don't say that, you lose a mark. You get a mark for saying that on every conversation activity. So just be very thorough. So there we go. We, we, have, we have a very good start on this conversation activity. And as I say, you know, you would continue this and complete the points. That's fine. But you've, you've done a great job. Good collaborative job here. Thank you for everybody who contributed to it. And I'm going to save that. Just bear with me for a moment. just putting today's date on it. Because I wanted to save that, that item. Stop sharing that screen now. <clears throat> I wanted to save that item because if any of you on this call would like me to email that document to you for your reference, then I will send that email to you. I'll, I'll Excuse me. Yes, go ahead, Sheree. Uh, would you please send this document to our WhatsApp group if it is possible? Um, I'm not sure how to put that Word document into the WhatsApp group, mm -hmm. but you can certainly do that if I email it to you. So if you want me to email you that Word document, please send me an e email to my, my Teasel email address and I, I will return it back to you. I simply ask you to send me an email. Uh, because I, I'm, okay, sure, sure, I'm not sure if I have everybody's email address. Okay, thank you. So again, there's my email address. <clears throat> okay. And there we go. So we only have about 20 minutes and we're going to do some review for the midterm exam that is coming up on Sunday. So we're going to go back to the Canvas platform and I'm looking at the, the Teasel handbook, which is down at the bottom. The Teasel handbook is in several different places, but it's at, I'm looking at it at the bottom of, of the conversation activities. But if we go to Let's go to modules and resources. Here's the handbook right here. So if you go to this handbook, it's an 83 page document. But like I mentioned earlier, a lot of pictures and charts, so it's not really 83 pages, it's much, much smaller than that. But if we go down to, just let it load up there. If we go down to, you know, about page 42, 40. Forty-two, forty-three. 43, down in there, it's got details of the lesson plan, how to write a lesson plan. It's got very good information 
that will help you with your conversation activities. Now, also, with, relate, with relation to the midterm exam coming up, if you go down a bit further, you get into a review of grammar translation methods, so you get the methodologies. You get a little bit of history, history about it. You get the objectives of the grammar translation method. You get the key features listed for you, typical techniques. And then you have direct method, details about that. You've got ALM, gives you details about that. And so you get these, these key methodologies, these main methodologies, given to you in great detail. So this is a very good summary spot. to go to to help you with your uh, your studying for the, the midterm exam. Even talk, there are sections here about discipline. There are sections about classroom management. So this is a very good, very good handbook for you to work with and, and use for review. Now, the midterm exam is based on Module 1, methodology, Methodologies and sen Sentence Transformation, and Module 2, Language Skills and Parts of Speech. So, we've got inside Module 1, you've got First Language Acquisition. You should be familiar with the steps inside these videos. You should watch those videos for sure. You should be familiar with terminology such as reduplication, telegraphic speech, the importance of the mother-parent role. Be very familiar with Noam Chomsky's language acquisition device. Watch this video, understand his language acquisition device, and, and understand Noam Chomsky. In second language acquisition, this video is an excellent video. I watched this video, I don't know, half a dozen times. It's an excellent video. It's approximately, uh, it's an hour and 14 minutes long. It's a long video, but it's an excellent video. So you should be very familiar with that, that video and all these different categories. Be familiar with what these mean. There are two types of motivation. What are the two types of motivation? Anybody? Intrinsic and extrinsic. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Eliza. And what, what does intrinsic motivation mean? What, what is the definition of intrinsic motivation? If you have an intrinsic motivation to do something, it's yeah. So it's a personal mindset yes. to get motivated. That's right. Yes, it, it you you want to it do is, it, so therefore you will. But mm -hmm. if it's it is by desire, yeah, internal motivation. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's right. Thank you. And if it's an extrinsic motivation, can you give me an example of extrinsic motivation? Uh, force motivation, yeah? Exactly. And, and it doesn't matter what the, the situation is. It doesn't matter if it's about learning English as a second language or if, it, if it's about, uh, you know, kids cleaning their, their bedroom. If it's extrinsic motivation, the kids clean the bedroom because they're told they must clean the bedroom. That's extrinsic motivation. If, if the kid wants to clean their bedroom, because they really want to have a neat, clean room. That's intrinsic motivation. So it doesn't matter what the situation is. Ex extrinsic is an external force requiring that the thing be done. And intrinsic is the internal desire, that, that sense of needing to do it, 
just from within yourself. So uh, these, these webinars are very good to watch as review. And I assume by now that you have all completed and submitted your foundation essay. If you have not yet submitted that foundation essay, you should at least have it written in a rough form before you do the midterm exam because doing the reading, the research, and writing this foundation essay will actually help you to study for the midterm exam to a certain extent. You should also listen to this Stephen Krashen video. You should be familiar with Stephen Krashen and what it is that he talks about, what, he's, what, he, what he did, what he was re referring to with his studies and why he did them. So this Canvas platform, I cannot stress enough how important it is to review the Canvas platform and uh, understand these 12 principles, which is known as the principled approach. Here you have the mention of intrinsic motivation. All these different items, the principles, these 12 principles related to learning English as a second language. And these are behavior related items. We're talking about learning English as a second language, but many of these principles apply to any situation. But of course, we want you to be thinking about it in terms of learning English as a second language. So, go through the Canvas modules 1 and 2 very thoroughly. As I was studying for the exams and going through these modules, I made brief handwritten notes about key points. And, and that, that's how I do my studying, and, and that might help you as well. Uh, because there certainly is a lot of material here. And it's not about memorizing word for word everything written on the platform at all. It's about understanding the meaning of any of these lists of items and understanding how they fit together and work together for second language acquisition. All of these videos are excellent videos to watch. These are very good. So you should watch those for sure. Does anybody have any questions related to modules one and two? Um, no, but I do have a question about the midterm itself. Okay. Uh, what would the duration of the midterm be? Two hours. Two hours. And um, is it like essay-based questions, multiple choices, a blend of the two? Like, what's the structure we're looking at? It, it's a blend of the two. So you're going to have some short answer questions. You might have uh, a few true-false questions. You might have some uh, where you're, you're filling in a blank or you're, you're, you're picking the best choice out of a list of responses to a question. <clears throat> then you might have a few questions that are, are short answer in, in the sense that you might you might type two or three sentences. Right. Uh, but then you might have you, you probably have a longer paragraph paragraph style, like a short essay. Okay. Yeah, so it's a combination of of different okay. styles of questions. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? with any questions about modules one and two or the midterm exam? Mr. Miller? Yes. Um, I want to ask, would that be on the 5th or the 12th? I didn't receive an email. So would that be on the 5th or the 12th? Well, on the, on the schedule that I'm, I'm referring to, I see the midterm exam as showing on December 4th. Fourth, uh, okay. Now, as I mentioned a bit earlier, 
you will receive a link, an email with a link for the exam. And, mm. and, and inside that link, you will see that the, it gives a time frame that the exam will be available from midnight of one night to midnight of, of 24 or 48 hours later. And, and so yeah. it's available for uh, that length of time to cover all the time zones around the globe. Yeah, because for me, that would be on this on a Saturday, the fourth, not on a Sunday. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Thank so, you. So depending on, you know, how the how your time zone where you are living, how your time zone relates to the, the time zone of the Pacific time zone, which is where Vancouver is the head office for Teasel, Vancouver, British Columbia. So all the times are set up with Pacific time. And then of course the time zones around the world adjust when everybody actually does it. Right. Yeah. So, so it might be made available from midnight on December 4th it might be available all through December 5th for you. I just don't know how the time zone is going to work for you specifically for each of mm. you in, in the country that you're living in. But they will be explained inside the uh, inside the email, okay? Yes, Any thank you. Questions? You're welcome. Any other questions about these modules? So, at this point in time, you should have submitted your foundation essay already. Uh, at this point in time, you should have definitely started working on your conversation activities and I would suggest that by this point you should have at least half of them done if not most of them and uh, coming up in the very new future are the four skills lesson plans so the conversation activities focus on speaking and listening and the four skills lesson plans of course add reading and writing into the mix so you need to have activities that cover each of the four skills in those other lesson plans in the near future. I would suggest that you should also by now have gone down all the way down towards the end of the, the platform down to module five. By now you should have all gone here to look at the final research paper and you should have made your selection about which topic you're going to be working on because you, you cannot leave this until the very end just to start it in a few weeks time you need to be working on this and working on it along with all the other modules that you're you're doing along the way because this final research paper it's quite time consuming and it is a total of eight to ten pages that you're asked to do so by now, I would suggest that you have chosen your topic and you have begun to do research on it. On December 6th, I will be doing a webinar with you about how to write a research paper. And I will be going into details about uh, using APA formatting style. And so we'll, I'll be showing you some examples and uh, giving you some links to, to go to, to get information about how to design uh, a research paper and put it together according to uh, APA style of writing. Now you can use APA or MLA, both are acceptable. Uh, we're going to be focusing on APA, which stands for the American Psychological Association. We're going to be focusing on that on December 6th and looking through that but you can do a Google search for, for the style guides for either of these and whichever one you choose you just need to be consistent throughout your paper <clears throat> so I would suggest that you get started on on that research paper and it, it gives a, a due date here for the research paper, the deadline to submit it is within two months after starting your course. Now, if you need a bit of extra time, that's fine. You can always request to have 
an extension of a week or two to, to submit your paper, but you don't want it to go on too long because the, the longer you take to submit things, the longer it takes for you to get the certificate. Okay? Any questions, folks? Um, Daniel, I'm uh, working, trying to finish this uh, uh, foundation uh, essay. Um, it, the requirement says uh, four to six pages. I remember last time you mentioned about um, each page you're covering a certain um, aspects, but uh, I forgot what did you mention about that. But what do you ref uh, what do you mean by that? I I'm just thinking of uh, introduction and uh, and structure, supporting points, and then the conclusion. I'm thinking of uh, that way, but uh, I'm not. I I don't remember what you mentioned about each each one or two pages should cover certain things. Can you can you uh, do you recall that or? Well, Cynthia, I think what you're referring to is, is that when you, you, you begin your, your foundation paper, uh, you begin with an, an introduction paragraph. Yeah. And then, then you've got the main part of, of the, the essay where you, yeah. you're describing points, uh, you're discussing advantages or disadvantages related to it, or pros yeah. and cons, what, you know, whatever, whatever fits the topic that you're doing. And then, of course, you always have a summary or conclusion paragraph. So the introduction should be roughly half a page, and a summary conclusion could be anything from half a page to a full page in length. Uh, so the main part of your essay is going to be the, the, the middle two or three pages where you're actually discussing mm -hmm. the topic, right? I think that's mm -hmm. what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Any yes. other questions, Thanks. folks? Any other questions before we sign off for today? No other questions? Okay. Thank you for the session, sir. Uh, you're very welcome. And we're finishing up now, so I'm going to stop the recording.